Alright, good evening. Uh, welcome to Button Down Fellowship. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, dive right into it. Uh, let's continue to pray for uh, uh, the sick uh, among us. Uh, the weather here is just really, um, uh, it's been going up and down, hot, cold, hot, cold. So there's a lot of people who are absent tonight. Uh, been talking to a lot of people up north. Uh, this is nothing to what they're, oh, what they're, what they're getting up north. Oh, let's know. Uh, I'm talking to one of my friends, uh, Andre, uh, today, and he said it was minus 8 yesterday oh, with the wind chill. Goodness. So he's in Cincinnati. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, there's a lot of people are snowed in and, you know, dealing with that. But, uh, I mean, this is cold for us. So, <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of people sick. Let's pray for uh, my father-in-law. Uh, he's still in the hospital. Let's continue to pray for him. Uh, my sister-in-law is out of the hospital. Uh, I, I think she's doing a lot better. I haven't she talked is. to my brother. Uh, uh, and also, uh, Uncle Mark, uh, I think uh, Shayla was doing better yesterday. So uh, continue to pray for Dennis's wife, uh, Susan. She's still not feeling well. Sister Thor uh, called. She's not feeling well. Uh, also, Uncle Billy is not feeling well either. Uh, Sister Sandra Walker, I heard, had to go back to the hospital. Uh, I haven't heard anything, an uh, update on whether she's back out or not, but let's continue to pray for her as well. So, uh, 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 so we have a lot of people. I think that covered everybody. If I didn't, I'm still going to pray for, for everybody for God's healing and those things. Let's continue to pray uh, for that. So let's, let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. Uh, we thank you for your guidance and understanding, oh God. We thank you for truth. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you for our eyes being open to truth. Uh, that we're not uh, just zealous, oh God, with, without any knowledge, but uh, Father God, we've come into the knowledge of the truth, which is your will. We ask you to touch all those who uh, uh, for were mentioned, uh, those who are sick, we ask you to touch each and every individual in their sickness right now. Yes. Uh, heal them according to your will, according to your to your providence, oh God. Uh, help us to understand your will. Help us to accept your will. Help us to transform our thinking to your thinking, oh God. Help us not to conform to this world. Uh, let us uh, Give us the mind to let, us, uh, let our requests be made known unto you, that you may comfort us and give us the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We thank you right now for who you are. We thank you for this ministry. We thank you for those involved in this in the ministry with the support of not only their finances but their money, but but their but their time, oh God. And we thank you right now. Uh, we act, we thank you for this time of fellowship. Uh, we thank you for those of us who who watching online. We thank you for the technology. Uh, we th just thank you for for those who are who are uh, 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 dear to us, O oh God, who are stuck in tradition and religion, we ask that you uh, give them the light, O oh God, show them the truth, uh, because it is not us, but it's, that it's you that will bring them into the repentance of the acknowledging of the truth, and we pray for that right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Uh, Acts chapter 25 is where we left off. Acts chapter 20, I'm sorry, 24 is where we left off. Acts chapter 24 is where we left off, right around the 16th verse. Acts 24 and verse 16. And it says, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. And we went through this last time, how Paul uh, always talked about the conscience. Uh, and how the conscience should uh, bear, uh, bear witness with his spirit. And uh, he always talked about those things. And understand that the conscience has everything to do with the mind and, and, and how we uh, perceive certain things. And so uh, Paul was really focused on the, the conscience uh, a lot. And uh, speaking of that, go to 1 Timothy really quick. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and we'll see something here real quick. First Timothy chapter 1, and let's look at verse uh, 3. First Timothy chapter 1, look at verse 3. As I besought, uh, let's start, just start at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. 
as I besought thee to a bold still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge them that they teach no other what? Doctrine. Doctrine, right? Neither give heed to fables and English genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which good <coughs> faith so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good what? Conscience. Conscience and a faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. Uh, go back to Acts 24. I wanted to, to read that to you because notice uh, Paul is exhorting Timothy to preach no other doctrine and make sure nobody else preaches no other doctrine. Yeah. But to give heed to these things, to, to, to not give heed to genealogies and things that gender strife, but to understand and have a pure uh, love or charity out of a pure conscience. Right? So that's what we're to do today. Uh, uh, act, uh, so as we come down here to Acts 24, Paul is, 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 is uh, on trial here. Uh, and he's been, been uh, locked up for quite some time. He uh, been, uh, went to before the chief captain. Then he went before Felix. Uh, then, now that's where we are now. He's going to go before uh, uh, King Agrippa here in the next couple of chapters as well. Uh, and we're going to see true justice comes from a, 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 a proper judgment. Uh, a lot of times, uh, as we're going to see, uh, even G the Lord Jesus Christ did not get a prop, did not get due justice. Uh, you know, uh, and, and even the Apostle Paul is not going to get any due justice here. Uh, but these men did no wrong at this time. And we're going to uh, begin to see that as we go down through here. Look at verse 17. Now, after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Now, remember, Paul is going down about his account of what he was doing. And remember, we saw that Paul would collect money for the uh, Jerusalem, the saints of Jerusalem. Because remember, in order to receive that kingdom, Israel in Acts 2 did what? What did sold they? Everything they, they sold everything they had, and they had a common wealth. And so understand that when they sold all they had, they were waiting for the coming kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. And so the coming kingdom did not come because God changed the program to that of grace, right? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, God had Paul minister through, to, the, to, through, to that little flock with finances, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 15, uh, Paul talks about that. We partake of their spiritual, the, the natural things and the spiritual things. Paul talks about it in Romans 15. And understand that what Paul is saying is that, understand, Paul never ministered in Jerusalem, right? Because that's where the apostles preached at. His ministry was always to, out to the apostle of the Gentiles, right? Even though on his way too further out, he always went to the Jew first early in the transition because God was still dealing with the nation of Israel. He just was not dealing through them, right? He was still dealing with them, though. And uh, so Paul says, after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and what? And offerings. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. Now, whenever Paul went in the temple, he knew the customs of the temple. Mm -hmm. So notice it said that they found him what? Purified in the temple. They didn't find him uh, uh, as an unclean thing in the temple. He knew exactly what to do. So it says that they found him purified in the temple, neither with what? No. Multitude. He didn't have a whole bunch of people with him riling, riling everybody. And tumult just means uh, with great noise, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't have all these people riling nobody up like they accused him of. And so Paul is basically giving his account here of what he was doing. Earlier, we saw that he said, I was only here for 12 days, right? And so now, uh, verse uh, 18 it says, uh, they found me purifying the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. Look at verse 19. Who ought to have been here before thee. Right? Now, even in the court system today, oftentimes some cases get thrown out because the witness does not show up. Point in case is, if you get a speeding ticket and you go to court to fight it, if the officer does not show up, the case is thrown out, right? So understand what Paul is saying. If it was really a fair trial and justice was really the issue, Paul is making some very deep points. Because he says, these same people who found me purified in the temple, 
No, I didn't. They saw me not with too many people. I wasn't riling anybody up. These same people that accused me of these things, they should be here to witness. Because remember, they could not start until everybody got there. Right? So understand, now Paul is saying, who ought to have been here before me and object. Right? If they had ought what? Against me. If it was that bad. Anything against me. And if they had anything against me, why aren't they here now? Mm -hmm. Right? Why are they here now? Because with, with, without, the, without the witness in this particular case, there should not have been any indictment. And there should not have been any type of charge to Paul. He should be scot-free. They should have looked around. There's no witnesses. Who is that? Who's, who's against you? Now, he even takes it a step further. Look at verse 20. Or else let these saying here what? If they have found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council. So Paul is saying, listen, the ones that accused me and made all of these railings and uh, lies about me, they're not here. But why aren't these men who are here even saying anything? Mm -hmm. See, so the original accusers didn't show, and even these men here aren't saying anything of what I've done. Because remember, the only person that spoke was who? On behalf of these Jews who lied against Paul. Who was their, their key speaker? Their lawyer, so to speak. Turtles, right? Turtles. So, so, so Paul is saying not only did they not show, but there's nobody else talking either who was here, right? Except, look at verse 21. Except it be for this what? One voice. Whose voice is that? That's his voice. Then I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called and questioned by you this day. See, it wasn't just the resurrection because Jesus, uh, I mean, the Pharisees believed in resurrection. Mm -hmm. But it was the resurrection of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? Because Peter preached the death, burial, and resurrection. But that wasn't necessarily the issue. The issue here is Paul is preaching the death, burial, and resurrection as, as it pertains to God leaving Israel and now going to the Gentiles. That's why they were so upset. Because when Peter preached the death, burial, and resurrection, he preached it as they're waiting for a coming what? Kingdom. See, Peter preached them according to prophecy. Paul preaches them according to mystery, right? So Paul is not only just talking about resurrection that they didn't agree with, because you had the Sadducees there too who didn't agree. Mm -hmm. But the Pharisees did not believe necessarily that Jesus was the Messiah. They did believe in resurrection though. But they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. So not only is Paul showing them that the same Jesus who you denied and crucified, not only is he the Messiah that you rejected, but he's the Messiah that now has left you and gone to the Gentiles. So he, they were very angry about that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what Paul is saying here. He said the same thing touching the resurrection of the dead. You believe that. The problem is you just don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And you definitely don't believe that he's not dealing with you anymore and he's come to the Gentiles. That's why they were so upset. Look at verse 22. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he did what? Deferred, Deferred them and said, when uh, Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. Right? So now, this is the same way is that when you talk to people, you give them truth, <laughs> they should come, they should have a more perfect what? Yeah. Knowledge, right? Paul just spoke to him. Turtle spoke to him before that. He knows the situations from Turtle's point of view, from Paul's point of view. He has perfect knowledge now, so he should be able to make a knowledgeable decision. You see that? Uh, and, and it's reminded when I talk to people, uh, I went to see a, a, a somebody, a guy preached the uh, Monday, and I had talked to this person about the truth of God's word, how you ha how we must rightly divide His word, and how we can't take Israel's promises and claim for us today and think we're spiritual Israel. I went to hear him preach for two reasons: one, to show them that I support him and open up the lines of communication as far as the witness is concerned. And two, to see if he was going to take this knowledge and then apply it and study it. Right? Now, I can't say that he's still not rightly dividing the word of truth. 
But it's good that he saw me there because now I can still talk to him and bring up this message and whatever have you to get him to try to understand truth. So, uh, uh, because I understand the people that, I, that were dear to me in that organization, just as Paul wanted the Jews to be saved, so I want them to understand truth as well and be saved, right? So, so what, Paul, what, what what's going on here is that Felix is now, because I understand this is an important decision he's about to make. This is an important decision, so he wants the whole thing of the matter, so he said he's going to wait till the chief comes down. And uh, look at verse 23, and he commanded a what? Centurion. To keep Paul. Now what's the significance of a centurion? He won't escape. What's that? He won't escape, but what's the significance of the centurion? What's special about the centurion as to why he won't escape? If his Paul escapes, he loses. His, his, his soldiers, right? What was special about a centurion as far as the soldiers are concerned? How many did he have? A hundred. He had a hundred, right? Remember, the centurion is a soldier who had a hundred men under him. Okay. Century for a hundred. Centurion, that's what that's what that's the significance of it. So he commanded not only just a couple people, but he commanded a centurion who had a hundred people under him to do what? To keep Paul and to let, watch this now and to let him have liberty. He's bound, but yet he's free. Notice what this said. That's why Paul says, even though I'm bound, the word of God is not bound. See, because Paul was still writing letters at this time. In Acts 28, when we get there, when he was on house arrest, he was writing letters. He was, and people were coming, healing the sick, doing all of these types of things, right? So understand, Paul was still doing the work of the ministry. Because, and when you look at this whole situation, where did Paul want to get to? Jerusalem. No. Rome. 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 Right? He wanted to get to Rome. Right? No, no, he's not in Rome here. I'm saying he wanted to get to Rome, right? And he he when he did get to Rome, he was in what? Change. Change, right? But understand, even at that time, the word of God was not bound. See, so I, 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 when you look at it, he wanted to go to Jerusalem early in this part of Acts, but God told him, Don't go. God sent warning not to go, right? And when he went that why? Because Jesus, God knew that they rejected my name here, but I'm going to send you to the Gentiles, right? So when you look at it, it's in God's will and providence that Paul is going to go further out west to Rome, but he's going to send him there as a prisoner, right? Now, can I ask a question? Uh -huh. Now, the reason why he has this liberty, is it because him being a Roman citizen, there you go. he yep. had to to punish him, they could not punish him without him having a trial first. Exactly, exactly. His so, Roman citizenship had a lot to do with that. That's also in the providence of God, because understand that he was a free-born Roman citizen, so they could not treat him as if he did not have any rights at all, mm -hmm. right? And Paul knew his rights, because we saw in earlier chapters, uh, Acts 16 and such, he used those rights, right, to say that I'm a free-born Roman citizen. I have certain rights. So that's, that's a very good point, that, that that was the case there. And uh, look at verse 23. So they command, uh, commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. So everybody that Timothy, all these people that he traveled with, they would have been able to come also. So he's bound, but yet in a sense he's still free. Liberty means to be free, right? Understand this now. So now, look at verse 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Jerusalem, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in who? Christ. Now, your job when you witness is to give people truth Amen. and then allow God to deal with people, right? Now, we don't want to strive with people. We can't make people believe. But you witness it to them, but what you do want them to understand when you leave from them is the fear of God. You want people to fear God, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you want. So watch this now. Mm -hmm. So he said for Paul, and listen, it says he heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Look at verse 25. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix did what? Trembled. He trembled. Right? When we tell people, 
I got some good news and I got some bad news. I want to hear first. You you should want to hear the bad news first, right? So the gospel means what? Good news. See the good what good is good news if there's no bad news. Right? So what happens is Paul is explaining this. Watch watch, watch this now. Go to uh go to Acts 9 real quick, verse 15. Paul is going to explain this. He heard about his faith in Christ. Paul is going to explain this. And he's going to explain it in such a way that they, they tremble. Right? When you use the law, Paul says to use the law lawfully. You make sure people understand that you are a sinner and whether you believe it or not, you're going to hell. If you don't understand this God, if you don't accept Christ and understand the gospel. Right? You're giving that bad news. And then once they and, and, and sometimes you may even say, unless they ask, don't even tell them how to be saved. Let them think about it. Because sometimes people get so scared to where they, oh, well, hold on, what now you said is, show me in the, you know, give me something else. Now give me the good news, right? So understand, look what God's will for Paul was. Look at Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and what? Kings. And the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Go back to Acts 24. So Phoebus is a type of what? What is Phoebus? He's a judge. No, he's a judge. So he, he's a, at this time he's considered what? The kings. God is sending him before the kings. He's going to go before King Agrippa also, right, and teach this, this, this doctrine. Understand that the leaders who are in position, God is going to send a way for them to hear truth, right? Because the powers that be are what? Ordained of God, Romans 13. So he's going to send them a way to do things according to his will. Now, if they reject it, then that's based on their free will, Amen. right? But understand, God is setting Paul up as he prophesied to go before the kings in order to suffer for Christ's name's sake. Mm -hmm. So what is Paul doing? He's locked up, set time of suffering, and he's also preaching to the kings, right? Because in order to see a king, how would Paul have been able to get there being just a normal citizen? Right? And to go and speak to a king. He, he would not have done it. But if he has to go before him before a trial, mm -hmm. he can do that. You see that? So getting locked up in this case wasn't so much a bad thing because Paul still had liberty. He still had his acquaintances who could come. Right? So all of this had to do within the providence of God and how God is now saying, you're going to bear my name before kings. And go Acts 25, uh, Acts 24 Verse 25, Paul, notice Paul said he reasoned with him, uh, 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 reason of righteousness. It's okay to reason with people if they want to reason in scripture, right? The funny thing that baffles me is that most church-going people don't want to reason in scripture. They will rather reason in the head knowledge or rather reason in a book that they read. Hmm. But when it comes to scripture, they do not want to reason there. Amen. Think you're arguing. You yeah, they, they, the first thing they say is, I don't want to debate. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not a debate because the Holy Ghost teaches by comparing what? Spiritual, to spiritual. spiritual, spiritual with spiritual. Mm -hmm. So how are we debating if that's what the Holy, how the Holy Ghost teaches? Jesus. See, the problem is they don't want, they really don't want truth. Mm -hmm. They just want reassurance that what they have been taught is truth. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's the key. They don't really want truth, and if they re if they reason in Scripture, then they might come to the understanding that what they have been taught was not right. Mm -hmm. So to save all of that, I'm, I already have what I know. I don't want to hear. I don't, I don't want to debate. Mm -hmm. Right? And they would literally close their ears from the Scriptures and close their eyes. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And look at and, and temperance and what. Judgment to what? To come. There's judgment to come, right? Uh, go to Revelation 21 real quick. Go to Revelation 21. Whether you believe it or not, there's judgment that's going to come. I, I, I told this a couple atheists a couple times, and the thing I can respect about them is... At least they have a stance of why they believe what they believe. 
Most church-going Christians, 95% of most Christians, have no clue of what they believe other than what they've been taught. They're on the fence. They, they, exactly. Yeah. They have no clue of really what they believe other than what they've been taught. But when you talk to some, you know, uh, even uh, Muslims and atheists, those types, when I, they, they know and have a belief, uh, a strong belief in what they believe in, right? But look at Revelation 21 and 8. Whether they believe this verse or not, you tell them this. You tell people this I tell you this verse all the time. Revelation 21, look at verse 8. But the fearful and what? Unbelieving. And abominable and murderous and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the what? Second and death. So whether you believe that or not, that's what's going to happen. Now, well, excuse me, mostly, well, I'm not a murderer. I've never murdered nobody. I'm not a whore monk. I'm not that. But notice it says all what? Liars. And how many lies does it take to uh, put, it need, to, need to be said for you to, to be a liar? Just one. Just one liar. Just one lie makes you a liar. Mm. Right? So understand, this is the bad news. All liars, and, and I'm pretty sure everyone has told they lie at some point or another. Right? So understand, according to this verse, what is your judgment? Death. Death. death which is the second death, that burning with brimstone, lake, the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Now notice that it's not just death physically, mm -hmm. but this is an eternal damnation mm -hmm. that Revelation 21 and 8 is talking about. Mm -hmm. Right? So eternally, you're going to de die. Both spiritually and naturally, right? Eternally. But there's a gift of God. Thank you, Jesus. There's a Thank gift you. of God, right? So understand, when go back to Acts 25, when Paul is telling, he's reasoning with them in righteousness, right? Temperance, you know, he's very temperate. See, a lot of times we get so angry at folks because they won't believe what we're saying, we get in the way of God's word. Amen. We get right in the way. Because they can't hear anything that we're saying because our temper, our attitude is not right. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul says, well, we, uh, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle, apt to teach. Mm -hmm. Right? And peradventure, God will be the ones to bring them into repentance, uh, uh, acknowledging, the, acknowledging the repentance to bring them into the acknowledging of the truth. Right? That's God's job. We can't get in the way of that because we want somebody to learn so bad. What I had to come to realize is that who wants somebody saved more than God? None of us do. But yet we harp on certain people because we want them saved so bad. But who wants them saved more than God? Because what is his will? That all men should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Now that's his will. His decree is something different. What scripture is that? 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Yeah, 1 Timothy 2 and 4. If that's his will, that means God wants you, wants you and your loved ones saved more than you do. So we can't get in their way. We have to be tempered, mild-mannered. We can't strive with people because we want them to know truth. Right? We have to understand we can't get in the way. So that's what Paul is doing. And when you get them to see Christ and the fear of God, what, what is the next thing he did? Felix did what? Trembled. He trembled and then answered, go thy way for this time. When I have convenient season, I will what? Call for thee. Now, technically what should have happened, you have no witnesses there. Mm -hmm. He should have been let go. See? But he trembled. Because that 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 you gotta understand the politics involved, even here. Mm -hmm. Because he was more concerned about the people. Because if he let Paul go, the people would have been upset with him because they were the ones who accused him, the Jews. Mm -hmm. Right? So understand, rather than doing the godly thing as far as justice is concerned, he told him what? Go that way for this time, and when I have a convenient season. Convenient to him, I will do what? Call for thee. Now, he called, he kept, look at verse 26. He hoped also that money should have been what? Given him. Of who? Paul. That he might do what? Lelusa. He tried to take a bribe. 
See, you fear, you're so afraid, you want money. See, when you think about this, that's what Paul says when he says about money. The love of money is the root of all kind of evil. Right? Godliness is not, uh, 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 gain is not godliness, but contempt. Right? So understand, when Paul says this, most preachers, it's hard for them to know truth because they're sitting behind their wealth. And so most of those preachers preach health, wealth, and prosperity. Because it's impossible for me to preach to you the grace message when I'm sitting up here loaded. Right? I have to preach to you in a way that you can continue to give, thinking you're going to get to my point at some point, my, my financial status at some point. Mm -hmm. Right? And you're really hoping for a blessing. I was listening, uh, talking to somebody, and he said that uh, I, he listened to uh, Creflo Dollar uh, uh, a, a couple years back, uh, and he said that he came to whatever city he was in, and he said, I was young in this time. I was in Christ. I mean, he said, I was young in Christ. I didn't really know the word like that. I didn't grew up in church. My parents took me to church. And he said, and I said, he said, I remember him saying, if you give, God will bless you a hundredfold. You'll be, you know, saying all the right things. He said, man, I had $20 in my pocket. I gave those last $20, and I'm still looking for those $20. <laughs> he, said, he said, I'm still looking for something that equates that $20 to what he said. Well, you're going to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, and so, uh, <laughs> I'm listening to a lot of people alone. He's pretty good. Now he is. Now he is. Now he is. This, this, this is from years ago. Now he is, right? Yeah, now he has it. Exactly, exactly. And, 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 that, and that's the thing is that it's hard to teach truth when you're teaching people about prosperity and God wants you to be rich and all these different things. Um, as a matter of fact, the preacher I just want to listen to Monday, he started out saying that, listen, uh, uh, money and we, we have to give away our possessions and, you know, we have to do these things and we have to understand it's not about that. And then when he got to the end of his message, when he was really excited, you know, he was like, you know, pull down your blessings. God is going to bless you with prosperity. And well, well, at the beginning of the message, you said it's not about that. But really, when you get excited, what really comes out is what you really wanted to say is you're preaching that God's going to bless you with this prosperity. If you, if you pull it down now, you, if you have faith that God is going to give it to you, you're going to be blessed financially. Yeah, nobody holds him accountable. Yeah, and, and, he was just setting you up. Yeah. yeah. Setting you up for yeah. donations. And what happens is people, they take bribes. That's just what, what, what uh, Phoenix is trying to do here. They're, they're bribing they're people. Bribing people. Right? They're, they're bri are still taking yeah. bribes. Still taking right. bribes. They're bribing right. people. And what happens is, especially in the church, and, and, and it really makes my, 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 my soul cringe, is that when people's expectation of God, uh, well, when people's situation does not meet their expectation of God based on what you're telling them, mm -hmm. they're not going to doubt you. They're going to doubt who? God. They're going to doubt God. Right. You see that? Because if you're telling me God is going to bless me with so much money if I give, and I give my last, and God does not necessarily bless me with all this money, then I'm going to be, well, God, what's going on? Or they're going to doubt themselves. Or they're going to doubt their own faith, right? Right? So understand the problem with money and trying to take bribes and all these things. Now, this guy should have let Paul go, but he's worried about a bribe. It says uh, that he might lose him, wherefore he sent with him the, uh, the author and communed with him. So he did this very what? Often, which he did it very what? Very often. He did this thing, uh, uh, because he thought Paul would be sick of sitting in there, would pay the bribe, and so he could be loose. And a lot of times, because there's no accountability, even in church circles, sometimes that is the case. You will, t you will take the bribe, in a sense, to get something of your own. But understand, you've got to stand for truth and you have to stand for righteousness, which is what Paul did. He's not going to take the bribe because that's just like saying I did something wrong. It's just like the plea deal today in our court system. They set most guys up, or women for that matter, to take a plea deal 
which means even though you know you didn't do it, but the evidence is so overwhelming against you, as opposed to getting 40 years, you might as well take the plea deal, say that you did it, right, and then get, get three years instead of 40. You took the bribe, right? Paul, the, the, the evidence here was overwhelming. You had all of these people, but when it came down to it, nobody showed. Right? Look at, now look at verse 27. Go back to verse 25. Read the end of verse 25. Mm -hmm. Felix Trimble, go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will do what? Call for thee. Call for thee. Look at verse 27. But after what? Two years. Two years. Oh, now Paul has been locked up for two years. After he has explained his case, there's no accusers, but he's locked up for two years. This is Agrippa and what they were saying in the past. I do some studying uh, that he was uh, in jail for two years because Agrippa he could not make the decision. Uh, he could not make the decision. Uh, so it just went on and on at Paul's time period, yeah. at his length of time. Yeah. If Agrippa would have made the decision then. He wouldn't have been. Two years. Yeah, and, and, and this is not a gripper yet. He hasn't oh, gone before okay. a gripper yet, but Felix. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is Felix now. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, but 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 you're right. But understand because now he's going to have to wait, and he's going to go before a gripper uh, uh, when we get to uh, Acts 26, right? But notice this. It says, but after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul what? Wow. Now, what do you think it means when it says Portia's Festus came into Felix's room? Willing to show the Jews a pleasure. Yeah. What does it mean when it says he came into Felix's room? Basically, what it is, he took office. Felix was no longer in office anymore. Oh, okay. Right? So now you had Por uh, Portia's uh, Festus, who was now and took Felix's place. That's what it means when it says he came into his room. Felix. Now, understand. When there's new ownership, most of the time they clean house on a lot of the old stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he had known about Paul's case and could have thrown it out. No. You see that? Because even in our, our, our society today, if you go to it, even when I play football, if, you, if, if, if they brought in a new coach, a lot of the old players that were the players of the old coach get let go. And the coach brings in his new players, just like the presidency. When there's a new president, all of the cabinet changes. Everybody that was with the old president is gone, and now the new president brings his cabinet in. I'm waiting. Right? <laughs> right? So, so, so understand, when, when, when you see that, what it's talking about is now the office has now changed. Right? Portia Spessers came into Phoenix's room. He could have let Paul go. But it says what? Willing to show the Jews at what? Pleasure. He wanted to please people. Yeah. Right? He left Paul bound because he wanted to please the people. So you have somebody that's wrongly accused, sitting in there for two years. You have an opportunity to let him go, but because you want to please the people. Mm -hmm. This sounds like Pilate. There, there you go. Sounds yeah. just like yeah. Pilate. There you go. With the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Pilate had to change. He even told him, don't you understand that I have the power to let you go? And Jesus had to tell him, the only power you got is given to you of my father. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But understand that, but that, that's what happens. And Paul and, and notice that Acts 9 and 15, when we went there, Jesus said, I must show him the things that he must suffer so, for my name's sake. Right? Look at verse 25. Now, when Festus was coming to the province after three days, he ascended from Caesarea to where? Jerusalem, right? Now, mm -hmm. understand. Paul, this go back to Acts 22. Let's go back to where this started at. Because Luke is going to record five times where Paul had to defend himself as it pertains to this issue. Look at Luke, uh, uh, Luke. Look at Acts 22 and look at verse 20. Look at verse. Uh, look at let's start look at 17. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, 
Even while I prayed in the temple, I was in the trance and saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of that martyr Stephen was shed, I was, also, I was also standing by and consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the what? Unto the Gentiles, right? So that's the first instance that we have there uh, uh, where Paul is trying to defend himself against this Jewish mob that was going to lock him up. Go Look at uh, Acts 23. Because in Acts 22, after that, they, cheat, they came in and they bound him up, right? But look at Acts 23. And Paul earnestly, verse 1, and Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest, Ananias, commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Remember that? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. He told him to hit him in his mouth. Because, you know, it was almost like who he think he talking to. Right? But and then Paul said unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sinnest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. You're hitting me contrary to the law. Right? Go to uh, Acts 24. We just saw now he went before Felix. Right? Look at Acts 25. Look at verse 8. Drop down to verse 8. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. Right? Now, what else do we see Caesar? As far as it pertains to somebody making a case to him. Where else do we find Caesar in the scripture? As far as him having the power to, and somebody came to him that was wrongly accused. Was that with Jesus Christ? That's with Jesus Christ, right? Because Pilate took him to who? Caesar. There you go. See, so understand, you have Caesar here again, right? Now, Caesar at this time is obviously the office, not so much the actual person, right? So understand this. Now, uh, go to Acts 26 real quick. Look at verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to what? Yeah. So now he's making his case. So Paul is going through the different sects of government, as, as it were, right? Just how, you know, sometimes your case goes through uh, small small claims, mm -hmm. then it may, depending on the case, it may go up to the next day, uh, all the way up to Supreme Court, right? Mm -hmm. So Paul is moving all the way up to the ladder, being bound, but yet he's talking to who? Kings. Kings, right? That's what God had said in Acts 9 and 15. Mm -hmm. He would bear God, Christ's name before the Gentiles, which that's what he was getting sent to because he was writing letters to them. Right? Mm -hmm. And understand, he was sent to kings and the children of Israel. Everybody that wants to be saved today and in the will and righteousness of God today is under the, 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 the doctrine of the Apostle Paul's epistles. Right? Exactly. In the book of Acts, what we're saying is that God is moving from the law to grace. He's moving from Israel as the nation and, and, and the channel of blessing to the Gentiles. Right? And that's what they were so upset about. Go back to Acts 25. Now when Festus, look at verse 1. Now when Festus was coming to the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to where? Jerusalem. Now he, he did what? Ascend. He that, went up. He went up. But notice that geographically he was actually going where? Down. down, but Jerusalem is the city that sits upon a hill, right? So it always references as going up to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. right? Look at verse 2. And notice that they were after three days that he ascended. 
Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to do what? Yeah. But Festus answered, now let's see what Festus has to say. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this one. Man. If there be any wickedness in him. So he said, listen, now y'all come on with me and accuse him. Because there has to be accusations and an actual witness there to point it out. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 6. And when he had tarried among them more than what? Ten days. The number of judgment. He went down into Caesarea, and the next day, sitting on the judgment, judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. Now, notice that this reference to the judgment seat, and we covered this in Romans, right? The judgment seat is where, where judgment takes place. That's why in a courtroom, the judge sits a little higher than everybody else, right? It's a judgment seat where judgment is to be made, right? Whether righteous or not, that's where judgment is to be made, right? Uh, excuse me, I'm going to read a couple more verses, and then I'll cover this next week. Look at verse 7. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. Just, just, just think about this. They're laying wait. It got so bad with the Lord Jesus Christ that they paid people to lie for, about it. Right? They paid people to lie. And so now they're laying wait to accuse and kill him. Why? What did Paul, what did Paul really do? Nothing. Why would, what, why would, and you notice that when you talk to certain people, they get so angry. Right? Especially atheists. If I'm not angry at you because you made the decision not to believe in God, why are you so angry at me because I made the decision to believe? Why did why were the Jews so angry? They hate out Jesus that much. They're, they're, why? They're, they're so angry. And Paul was preaching what they, some of them believed, the resurrection. Mm. But the problem is when you speak about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that makes him the Messiah. They didn't want to believe that. And not only that, but now their Messiah is no longer going through them, but he's now come to the Gentiles. Right? They were upset about that. So upset that they wanted to kill him. And do you think it was, they were upset too because he's now preaching that the Gentiles could have Jesus just or Christ just as they could. So it made them equal to to the Jews. Yeah, and that's, that's my point. 